Hi, thank you so much. That was great. Illuminating from lots of angles. I had a question about um, the way in which you arrange for predicative subject matters to be the same as sentential subject matters. Um, it, sounds, it sounds like part, part of the trick was that you count worlds un unlike with respect to color if they contain different objects. Even yes. if all the objects are red in both of them, if one world has an additional object, they're, yes. they're, they're, they're yeah. color distinct. So I was wondering, can you distinguish the following subject matters? C color and color in which things there are. Yeah, yeah you're right. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, the way I set up things, I can't. Yeah. And, uh, be but because the idea is that color would include which things there are. So color would be identical with the sum of color and what there is, so to say. Because the idea is that if there is one more object in one of those words, it is going to have a color. Yeah. And so the situation color-wise is not going to be the same. So I want to say that what there is is part of color. And therefore, I cannot distinguish color plus color and ontology, so to say. Okay. But I realize that this is maybe suboptimal, but yeah, it gets the work, uh, the job done. Yeah, it gets the job done. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, thanks so much. I was very interested in everything, but particularly, I, 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 I mean, it seems to me like the the mute, the sort of it being a partition is playing quite a large role in your theory, at least in the last ways. And I wonder, I mean, what do you think about the kind of challenges to that? I mean, uh, you know, it doesn't work well for approximate color or you know approximate numerosity. The examples that 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 Steve has in aboutness, which I found very convincing for thinking that partitions are yeah. not the way of thinking. And I, I just wonder, you know, do you think that's a you know sort of a changeable aspect of your theory. You, you lose, I guess, the last theory about the, entirely about yeah. the view of approximate. So I think you, so the way I deal with that problem is to simply ignore it. <laughs> and that's, that's my way of dealing with the problem because I'm, I'm really worried about that, 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 that issue. But uh, everything works so well with, uh, with, with partitions, even, even the definition of what it, what it means to combine two partitions, it's so smooth. So even, even in the paper, when I want to, to assign a subject matter to complex formulas, it's so useful to have partitions that, uh, that, that my approach is like, let's see what can be done by working with partitions. And if a lot can be done, then it's good to know and then we can try and see whether the same thing or something similar can be done by, with covers or something more, uh, more fancy, more cool. So, um, so yeah, I care about. Uh, I see the force of the of the objection, but uh, but it would it would change the the formal machinery so much that I I prefer for the moment to stick with partitions. But you are absolutely right. It's, it's true that uh, that even when when we get, we get to categories, only some categories are partitions, but are the right. only some ways of de-refining the aspect. So the, the refining is the opposite, the the, the inverse of refining uh, count as uh, as partitions. But I, I'm happy that some do. Okay. Is it just quick? The categories that are not partitions, are they just relations? Is that Probably they are just covers. Like, like I think you might say that, uh, uh, yeah, that then, a, then, a, then an approximation, then, so, but you, you might call them categories if you, so I, I don't want to have any, I, I don't care too much about the, the, the terminology. Excuse me. When you come up to ask a question, please uh, say your name. It's for the video recording. OK. Uh, 
Just an example. Uh, would you say that the subject matter of heat is the kinetic energy of the particle? Oh. Uh, are you prepared to accept that the subject matter of the predicate is dependent of a theory of a physical theory? Well, uh, uh, if uh, not, mm -hmm. would you say that the subject matter of heat is? What it is like, or dependent of a phenomenological aspect, and would you agree that your account of of, of subject matter here is um, bounded with uh, the determinable determinate distinction? Because you have always examples that are. I would say determinate of some determinables, but mm -hmm. what, what if not? What if not? So uh, no, no, thank you. Well, one example that I made of an aspect is the number of atoms, and this doesn't seem to fit in the in the determinable determinate yeah, distinction. Right. So maybe there are aspects that are that don't fit into that category. And, uh, well, I would say that, uh, so I want to assign a subject matter to, to predicates. So, for instance, a nice question is, what is the subject matter of warm? And you might say, it, is it heat? And is it uh, kinetic uh, energy, the same subject matter as heat? So when, when two words are indistinguishable in terms of kinetic energy, are they indistinguishable in terms of heat? I might say yes to this. And, uh, and then there might be another subject matter that is something like perceived temperature, um, or temperature. Uh, well, anyway, perceived temperature, which is such that two words are in, in, indistinguishable in, in, two words are indistinguishable with respect to that subject matter if uh, uh, no object in one word is perceived in a different way than in the other. And, and absolute temperature and, uh, and perceived temperature might be different subject matters because they, they might be different equivalence relations. It's, it's a little bit like color and perceived color in Steve's talk. So I might try to, to use the same strategy. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm really open. Hmm. The point is, uh, sometimes it is unclear what is the equivalence relation that serves as a subject matter for a certain sentence or a certain predicate, but maybe it is unclear because it is unclear what the predicate, what the predicate or the sentence is about. Yeah. So I think if you, if you have a vague phenomenon, then the model should reflect that to a certain extent. Thank you. Thank you. Good, thanks. Um, that's real weird. Um, I, I guess it's a clarificatory question which, which relates to, I guess, what Jean Baptiste just yes. said. Um, it's so the, the number of stars, like, you know, there are n number of stars, uh, yep. seems to be about. So the number here. It, it sounded as if the number was uh, was in the about in the a, a predicate with a aboutness in there. No, it was the the, the sentence. The number of stars is eight. Is about the number of stars, but it that is the subject. The number of stars right. is a subject matter of a sentence, not of so a. So eight the is not in the in the. N not no. not directly. So the idea is that f in, in in our account, the number of star that the two sentences, the number of star is eight and the number of star is nine, have exactly the same subject matter. Yeah, good. Okay. And but I think this is good because if 
think about think about the subject matter by asking yourself when is someone changing the subject and if you say the number of stars is eight and I say no the number of stars is nine you cannot say wait 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 a minute don't change the subject so I think it's a good thing that they have the same subject matter right so and and so do you so okay that that's helpful and uh, mm -hmm. and then so do you have a story about how you uh, distinguish between, as you as you said at some point, like between, yeah. like you know, excluding some things which look like a predicate uh, with a subject matter, with, but, but but really it's not what you're looking for. So height was your example, that maybe it's not really relevant, even though it sounds relevant at first sight. So height yeah. is relevant, but the idea is that we we rarely talk about the exact height of a thing. We usually talk about the 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 height of a thing given a certain uh, scale, given a certain unit of measure, and uh, that was the point. But the, the height of a thing is, is 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 very relevant to determine what is the height in centimeters of thing of a certain thing. Actually, the height determines the height in centimeters. In the sense that if two objects have exactly the same height, they are going to be and so um, about fake and uh, and uh, genuine predicates that that it's a good question but my my point in introducing the distinction between categories and aspect is was to say well look aspects are relations that are so demanding that we rarely talk about about them we usually talk about something that is more tractable, that is measurable, mm. that we have some clear grip on. And the aspect is like an ideal that, uh, All right. like the noumen, if you want. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's, let's throw it there. And uh, no, anyway, uh, let's say. And, but maybe, maybe there was another question behind uh, the one that you asked, that is, if, if uh, the number of planets is nine and the number of planets is eight have the same subject matter, uh, what, is, what is the difference between the two? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and my answer is that uh, they have the same subject matter but different truth conditions. And that's a vindication, I think, of something that Diablo says in aboutness. So the truth condition and subject matter are two largely independent factors that jointly determine meanings, meaning. I think that this is, I'm quoting by memory, this is probably not accurate, but anyway, the idea is you shouldn't be able to recover the subject matter of a sentence from its truth conditions, and this is something that, okay. that everyone accepts, but uh, a tricky point is whether you can recover the truth condition or something close to the truth condition of, uh, of a sentence from its subject matter, and if the subject matter is the, the, the pair composed by the truth makers of a sentence and the, the false maker of a sentence, then you have these two things. You take the union of the first thing and the union of the second thing, and you end up not with the truth condition, but with the binary subject matter. Yeah. Hmm? And, uh, and that is dangerously close to, to the truth condition. So, well, if you assume, of course, you have to assume that uh, whenever a sentence is true, is true, there is a truth maker and there is something that makes it true and whenever it is false, there is something that makes it false. But otherwise, the, this goes through. So whereas in, in our account, really, it's, a, it's what people call a two-component semantics, which aboutness and truth condition, they are really separate, more separate than, than in, in standard truth maker semantics. You might like it, you might not like it, but it's it's a feature of our. No, account. but thanks. That's super helpful. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I'm Tamar Andre Mazaka. Thank you for the very interesting talk. I really like the idea of uh, predicates having a subject matter and the possibility of comparing that subject matter with that of the sentences in which it occurs. But when I 
think about the, the data that this theory is supposed to, to explain, I'm getting a little bit confused. And one intuitive idea that I have is that whatever the subject matter of the sentence Alice is happy might mm -hmm. be, whatever the subject matter of the predicate happy might be, I have the intuitive idea that uh, the subject matter of the sentence Alice is happy should contain the uh, subject matter of uh, the predicate mm. happy. But that's not a result that you have in your... No, it's the other way around. You're exactly. right. Uh, so is there a reason that you should think that my uh, intuitions are wrong and should be revised? Or is, that some, is there some other phenomena that you have to look oh. uh, I mean, the important thing, I think, is that the subject matter of a sentence and the subject matter of its part are connected. It's not important that the subject matter of part of the sentence be a, a part of the subject matter of that sentence. So actually, in my account, as you say, uh, is, a, is, a, is a restriction of the, the subject matter of, uh, of the predicate. And uh, well, I, I, I think exactly that you shouldn't confuse merological relation between syntactic expressions with merological relations between the, the subject matters. That's the only, the only thing that I can say in reply. But I can perfectly understand uh, your, your initial thought. And, uh, yeah, be because the, mm -hmm. this idea that the numerical structure of, the, of complex sentences is to be linked to the numerology of topic is the reason why people usually uh, define yep. the subject matter of logically complex yep. uh, sentences like they do. So it's kind of a bit um, frustrating that this <laughs> analogy doesn't go through at the predicate yeah. I do I do understand, but think about also the, the classic semantic value of a sentence. So the, the classic semantic value of a predicate is a function, and uh, well, if you take at least the extension, the, the semantic value of, uh, of a sentence is a tooth value. Uh, it's not that, tooth, that, that the tooth value is part, on, on, or only at least in a very derivative sense of the uh, so it's, an, it's not that the, 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 the function is part of the tooth value. No, that, that is really. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, the subject matter of Fiona is happy highly depends on, on which part you, you stress. Because if you say Fiona is happy, then the subject matter is who is happy. this time, Daniel Rothschild. Um, so I, I had a kind of variation on Steve's question, um, which is you, you have, so here's a kind of property. It's a property of collections, having numerosities. Mm -hmm. So now I'm trying to figure out what's the subject matter associated with like being a collection of seven. You know, it's, a, it's only something can happen, like you can't have a cardinality property, probably like only like things like collections and sets can happen. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, okay, um, well, it's a relation on worlds, but it changes when there's different collections of seven in a world. So supposing like worlds all have finite number of objects. So you change like how many things there are in the yeah. world, then you change which things have collection of sevens. But, you know, which collections have the numerosity seven, yep. assuming yep. just any. Yep. So, 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 but then you, you, you get another, you get a sort of, more, even more extreme version of Steve's problem. It turns out the, the subject matter of being seven, the, a collection being seven, is the same thing as the subject matter of how many total things there are in the world. So like, mm. it's meant to be a property of you know, collections, yeah. but it seems it's also that. So I, I'm just saying that there's sort of distinct, I, I, I mean, this is my worry about, in general, using, a, you know, defining subject matter as, as relations on worlds for mm. like subject matters of, of properties, which in some sense are more fine grain. That, and so you get these things like that. that. That's anyway, sort of just another version of Steve's worries. And maybe there's not much to say about it, but it seemed a little more extreme. Yeah. Because you have an identity of two subject matters, not just like an inclusion. Well, mm, not so. It, it, it depends how, how many things there are in the world doesn't have to contain uh, how many concepts, if you want, uh, have the cardinality seven. So which concepts have the cardinality seven? Because it might be that two worlds have equally many objects, but there are seven dogs in one world, 
uh, but not seven dogs in the other. So I think that which concepts have numerosity seven contains how many objects are there in the world, but not the other way around. So it's just the same version of C. Yeah. I guess I was thinking that if the predicate, if it's not what concepts, but what arbitrary collections, so that it's not a feature it, of the world. Yeah, but yeah, okay. but then, then, then I mean, it's a, it's a very strange subject matter. How many collection, arbitrary collections? So. Well, but it's not a subject matter of a, of a. It's a subject matter. Sorry about the property that a collection has, being. Yeah, being but seven. yeah, yeah, but sorry. but but yeah, no, but the, 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 okay, yeah. So I think it's so not so, that so no, but 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 I agree that which properties um, have numerosity seven. It's a very demanding subject matter. That, that's all right. But what I was saying is that uh, the, 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 the subject matter, um, what is the, the cardinality of each plurality in the world, that it, it, it sounds very artificial and very weird to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, that, is, that contains a lot of stuff. But it's, uh, where is it? See, yeah, so that, that was the point. OK, thanks. <laughs>